Let's see if this is working. Creator Studio. Live streaming. There she is. Miss America. What's up, y'all? How you guys feeling today? What's up, bears? The unbearables are amassing. I love it. All right. Everyone good? We're streaming on my website and Vimeo and Twitch and all that stuff. I'm just going to maintain that. Just why not? As long as I can do it, I'm going to do it. But here we are. I'm at uh, the YouTube chat right now. Feel free to super chat or do uh, paypal.com slash feed the bear if you want to send one of those because I'm about to start uh, showing you guys some cool stuff. So I'm not going to be in the chat. So that's the only way that they kind of stay so I can see them in a second. Okay, I know I'm a little close to the computer today, but that's because I haven't had any work done on my face, so my face doesn't look insane like these people. Look at look at their faces. Okay, so Whitney Cummings does an Instagram post where she says, so I guess this was just the best day of my life at Caitlyn Jenner. Chris Parnell, Jane Krakowski. I don't know who Jane Krakowski is. I'm not bashing this chick. I'm not bashing anybody, to be honest with you. This isn't a bashing situation. But it is a bit of a critique. I think Whitney Cummings and Caitlyn Jenner have the same face. Like, it's really weird. And I don't understand what's happening with people's faces in Los Angeles. Amy was showing me this thing where there were all these... uh. There are all these, uh, uh, what are they called? The Real Housewives of some shit, like Beverly Hills or something. And over the seasons, you can see that their faces start becoming the same face. And it's weird when it even happens with dudes. You know? Like, like Caitlyn Jenner is biologically a dude. And looks exactly like Whitney Cummings. They look like melted candles. And this isn't like a beauty bashing situation. I, I, I just don't understand. Are, is there some, are the AI trying to make us into robots or something? Like, I, I don't understand. Chris Carnell looks like he just got away with some sort of felony sexual assault. And I'm not bashing him. I, I, I have no reason to believe he's ever assaulted anybody. But it looks like he's whacking off in this picture. And no one knows. And that's what that smile's about. He's like, no one knows but me. No one knows but me. So I just want to bring that to everyone's attention, that people's faces are becoming the same face. I think that, like, uh, the plastic surgeon doctor, they almost have, like, one face now. Where they're like, oh, you want the face? Or do you not want the face? And people are like, ah, uh, what's the face? They're like, Caitlyn Jenner, Whitney Cummings, uh, the cast of All the Housewives. It's just, the, it's the only face. And if you want to look into it and get all trippy, <clears throat> it's it's almost like the face the the faceless it's the faceless nature of power acquisition. And and they touched on it in um Game of Thrones with the with the faces, you know, with the with the uh, uh, Arya her storyline about how you can just wear different faces and um I think that when you're in a certain culture and a certain mindset and you live a certain life, your face starts becoming not your own anymore. And it literally starts becoming a melted candle. And so I guess that was one of Whitney Cummings' greatest days of her life, was finding another melted candle and um, and just enjoying it. Just enjoying the, the reflection in, in uh, Narcissus. You know, uh, the, the, the story of Narcissus the root of nar uh, narcissism is he looks into the lake and sees the image of his own face and he falls in love with himself and he dies because he can't leave the image. But this is the, the part of the story that a lot of people don't know is the lake falls in love with its own image in the eyes of Narcissus. So the lake is sad when, when Narcissus falls in the lake and, and, and dies because uh, the lake loved looking at itself in the eyes of Narcissus. So here we have the lake and Narcissus, and it's the greatest day of their lives. And some of you might be wondering, Big Bear, 
Why are you going uh, hard in the paint at Whitney Comics? Well, A, it's because for no reason the other day on Bobby Lee's podcast, she just wanted to take a shot at me. And I'm not taking a shot back like it's some sort of sparring match. It just opens up it just opens up my ability of mocking someone that deserves it. The same thing happened with Anthony Jeselnik. People were like, hey, Big Bear, why are you going hard in the paint on Anthony Jeselnik? Because he called me a racist for no reason. And then when I went to uh, ask him about it, he had blocked me on Twitter. So I revealed the fact that he has liposuction done on his ass. That's something I've known for a, a long time. But I don't just come at people unless they come at me. If you poke a bear, just know that what you are is, it better be in line, which it won't be. Because if you poke a bear for no reason, it already tells me in in the world that that, uh, you're not in line. And Whitney Cummings' face looks like Caitlyn Jenner's distorted face. They look like melted candles. So ask yourself, before poking a bear, ask yourself, be like, before I poke this bear for no reason... Does my face look like a a space alien's asshole? And if so, maybe I shouldn't poke a bear for no reason. Maybe I shouldn't tell Bobby Lee that that Owen Benjamin has uh, become some sort of crazy conservative whack job uh, because he can't handle money. See, that's the interesting thing about people that live this uh, faceless lifestyle is they think the world is only in terms of money. Me going more right wing lost my money. Like I lost tremendous amounts of money and I wasn't two broke girls rich. You know what I'm saying, Whitney? One of the worst shows ever made. Like literally one of the worst shows ever made. Like you can't watch it like a whole episode without being like, what is this? It's melted candle wax, just like the faces of these people. And when they see the world in terms of Uh, just money and power, you think like, oh, so did Owen get more or less money and how did that affect his brain? Well, other people are motivated by what is true and what is right. And as flawed as I am and will always be, that's my motivation. So, and then her and Bobby went on to talk about uh, how abortions are a great fodder for stand-up and how Bobby has had two abortions with his current girlfriend and how sometimes it's great to talk about on stage and how Whitney, uh, I don't know how, how many abortions she's had. I don't, I didn't, I don't remember that part. To be honest, I didn't listen to it. Uh, someone just wrote me the transcript and then a, a couple other people wrote it to me as well. So I don't want to listen. There's no reason to listen, but, uh, you know, when hundreds of thousands of people hear that shit, Maybe they'll also hear my little take on their fucking stupid faces. I happen to like Bobby Lee. So. It's not even that I have a big problem with Whitney. I just think her face looks like an alien's asshole. Like if if an alien was made of wax and got a little too close to the sun. And then uh, a transgendered person started mangling their face with a knife. That's kind of like what it what it all looks like. All right. So let's talk about some other stuff. Uh, oh, new special is up for sale for 10 bucks. It's called uh, Reluctant Warlord, and it's at hugepianist.com. So far, the reviews have been very good. And the reviews, I do not mean the New York Times. I mean people that have bought it and watched it, which are the only reviews you should ever care about. Because the New York Times backed Castro. Yeah. And they thought the Soviet Union was awesome. All right. I'm going to... Sh- I'm gonna. Um, one of the dudes that came out to my Prosser show as well as my Bellevue show sent me this. He's in medical school and he said the SJWs are trying to invade medicine. They're trying to give everyone the same face. This is a hilarious, wee pathetic. Uh, students are invisible. Racism is here. And, and what they're doing is they're protesting white coats because they think white coats are racist. When really um, scientists and 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 uh, doctors wear white coats because it's very easy to see anything on your coat. If you wore black coats, you wouldn't be able to see the fleas and the the maggots quite as well. 
as you cut open the faces of these monstrosities. All right. Oh, we got a super chat. Hey, Big Bear, I've been watching you for a while and appreciate what you're doing. I need verification. I'd like to be Muffler Bear. Welcome, Muffler Bear. Uh, this is from uh, Luke. Editor Bear here. Can my podcast get a shout out? We're all in the same boat. Of course, buddy. iTunes and SoundCloud. Often find myself defending conservative values alone, like in our gun control episode. Stay strong, Bears. Editor, all right, so Rocks World Vlog. I hope that's a Luke Rocks World Vlog. Is that your podcast? I just read uh, read what you wrote me, but all right. So let's take a look. This is from my Bellevue. Show. Oh, this is the Reluctant Warlord trailer that we just put up. And much, much respect to Artling. I'm going to do a lot with that bear. Check this out. <laughs> City of Soy, baby. One more time for Eric Never, everybody. That was so funny, bro. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. We did it. We put on a show. We put on a show. Couldn't stop the show, man. And uh, make some noise for the Redmond family for making it happen. Yeah. Legendary. Because this is the thing. Because I, I performed in Portland a bunch of times. I've done Helium. I've done some stuff here. And, uh, and then the social, the SJWs got got wind of me and started getting sad and and uh and so I'm, I'm boys with uh joe and i was like what's the one place where they would never go i'm like military truck and a place where men work <laughs> they're terrified of this place <laughs> all right so you can get that at huge pianist.com and uh coddington made me a, a better trailer i just we got to upload it. Sorry, Coddington. Uh, Rhaegar says, uh, the guys who organize these protests aren't dumb. They, they're knowing, knowingly selling sophistry for a political career in the future. It just so happens community organizations are the yellow brick road to power. And that's absolutely true. I wanted to read that. That's in the normal chat <clears throat> because it's so accurate. But here's the thing. People are getting sophistry only works when, when it works. Sophistry stops working when people uh, become... Uh, aware of it you know it's like any charlatan snake oil salesman or over the years you know back in the day you could sell that you could make it rain with dancing and singing so this this the way to stop it is just simply to explain why they're wrong and make it so culturally it isn't cool and you won't um get a good job or a good husband or wife or family from that horse shit. Yeah, you saw that with Michelle Wolf. Michelle Wolf did the dance, said complete nonsense, and then got her own Netflix show, which is worse than watching a beheading. It's less comedic. If anybody wants, this is my new thing. This is what I, I really enjoy, is watching things as comedies, like the unintended comedy of it. Michelle Wolf's new show, new comedy show, is so bad. That it's 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 not even really funny. Like I watch MSNBC sometimes, sometimes, or um, the show sometimes, because it's really funny when you see these people trying to take things seriously that they don't un either they don't understand or they're knowingly doing sophistry. What that dude was just talking about, it's hilarious. It's as if someone, uh, like a car is smoking and, and there's a wheels are off a car on the side of the highway and they're like, this, this, no one knows why this car isn't working. They're like, it must be, I don't know, you know what I'm saying. They just come up with a thing that isn't accurate. <laughs> and that's kind of like the start of comedy. Because, uh, for example, look at this guy. I saw this pops up on my Instagram sometimes. These ads for Masterclass. It says, Judd Apatow teaches comedy. 
You will learn more about comedy by watching a squirrel trying to rob a bird feeder. He'll fall and you'll play it. If you just watch the squirrel just try as hard as he possibly can to get seeds from a bird feeder, you will get bigger laughs than watching Judd Apatow. Judd Apatow is to comedy like soy is to a man's penis girth. It 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 shrinks it. This dude isn't funny. He's never been funny. He's had a couple moments in a couple movies that were funny, but it was only because of the the uh, the performance of the comedian. I think he's an absolute... Something's going on with this guy. Mark my words. Come back in a few years. See what came out about this guy. That guy m- matches every single thing. Just hardcore DNC, like donor... Um, he, he's like evangelical DNC guy, just like loves abortion and hates Trump and, and talks about it nonstop on Twitter and, um, uh, isn't funny and is wildly successful in Hollywood and has that creepy, clammy, don't trust me around your kid's stare. I mean, look at him. Would you let your kid like get a ride from that guy like to school? I wouldn't. There's no chance. No chance. So we'll see about that guy. We'll see about that guy. All right, here's a little clip that happened in Bellevue. If you guys want to see uh, something that started is kind of scary for me and then ended up pretty funny. All right, let me see this. Is this the right one? Is this the right one? Hang on a second, gents. It's like riffing the last part there. One more request and then I'll end What's that? Like the actual song? Ah, uh, hey, yeah, okay. You were so passionate that I will. I won't do the whole thing because it's not comedic. I don't play it. Was that funny? Oh, I don't remember the words, man. I read shit every day. I do two hours a day. So it's like, there's no way I can remember that or else. I'll give it a shot. Give it a shot. <laughs> What's that? You got the lyrics? Get a little aggressive. I'll, I'll do at least a verse. <laughs> I heard there was a secret court. Where journalists weren't allowed to report, but you don't really care for freedom, do you? It goes like this without the fifth, the gavel falls, and they cuff your wrist. Uh, Guys, what's that sign? They don't really care for freedom, do you? That's how they rule you. Death threats don't ever do that ever again. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, dude. You know how many times a day people tell me they're gonna kill me at my shows? <laughs> don't ever do that again. Alright, here we go. I heard there was a secret court. Terrifying. <laughs> and especially if you have a fucking beard. Because of the- <laughs> Jesus Christ. I heard there was a secret court where journalists weren't allowed to report, but you don't really care for freedom, do you? It goes like this without the fifth, the gavel falls, and they cuff your wrists. It's it's not okay, but this is how they rule you. 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 But Tommy has been here before. He's seen the 
this room and he's walked this floor last time they tried to kill him but he endured yeah they need their votes for the growing state and won't stop who their voters rape and it's not okay that this is how they rule you how they rule you how they rule you how they rule you how they rule there was a time the press let you know who's really coming to your shores but now they don't tell the story ever true yet the state tries to say Tommy has racial hate, but really it's a fear of a caliphate. And the state says, no, this is how we rule ya. How we rule ya. How we rule ya. Pedophiles are celebrated while Tommy Robinson is incarcerated. But you never seem to care for children, do you? The grooming gangs move in on you, and the kids look to you for truth. Please don't say, baby, this is how they rule you. 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 Yeah, man, I find that guy really inspiring, and I, I can't believe he got in prison for um, for reporting on um, grooming gangs. I just toured England; it's horrifying. Free Tommy. Yeah, for sure. All right, so this is how we close the show. Uh, thanks for listening. To that. I never, I never do serious like normal songs. So I was waiting for like punchlines, and I'm like, oh, I'm just, I'm just reciting horror. <laughs> And uh, a man stole my stage to give me with a giant beer and uh, crazy look on out. But dude, it's awesome that you printed this out, man. I take back the, uh, you know, saying don't do that. It's all good. What's that one? You didn't print it? Who printed it? I know Malin is spreading this around, which is cool. That dude's fucking a sound, dude. Yeah. It's just like, Robinson's done, he's not a fucking racist. I hate when people paint that shit. Like, he, he's like, yo, because England has none of the racial shit that we do. It's hilarious. He's like, most of the best men are black. Look at fucking Bubbles. You know Bubbles? He's like, hello, Tom, man. He's like, it's not about race. It's about law. They're fucking all our kids. And Bubbles like, they're fucking our kids, Tom, man. He's like, I don't give a fuck. What color your skin is? Don't fuck kids. And, and then the British government is like, come with us, troublemaker. It's crazy. All right, it's all good. A little bit of a bus kill, but it's <clears> true. <throat> all right, so anyway. All right, so I wasn't planning on doing a serious song at a comedy show, but I, I'm really glad that happened. I'm glad that uh, someone requested it. And I was checking out the chat while I was watching that, and uh, I, it seems like people are really behind Tommy, and I think that's the move because. When my buddy died, the Marine, I remember like uh, this one dude told me that a, a warrior only dies when people when the wind stops speaking his name. And Tommy isn't even dead. He's just in jail. So that's why it's important to keep someone's name alive when they're silenced. And that's why I'm doing my part because I see a lot of the struggles Tommy has went through is similar to my own except way worse. Like what that dude has faced is, uh, is incredible. And, and I think that like the stances that he's made is just, and to see his name get so, um, that's why I was, I was cri uh, critical of Ben Shapiro a few uh, shows ago is because when he did the Roseanne thing and said how racist that was, normally I would have just let that go and not really say anything, but he had also recently said Tommy Robinson was alt-right.
And that was just infuriating to me. It's another reason why I went at, um, um, oh, what's his name? I can't even remember the guy's name anymore. Sam Harris. When Sam Harris was like just arguing with Jordan Peterson, it was so frustrating to listen to. And then when he was talking about how, um, how you should lie to your kids about determinism, I'm like, fuck this guy. So I kind of torched him. I still love Shapiro though. So I, I, I it felt kind of uncomfortable for me to, uh, to criticize Shapiro, but I, I, and, and Shapiro did walk back that he called Tommy Robinson like this, uh, nefarious character, which is awesome that he did that. So I think we should give, uh, Ben a lot of respect for that because a lot of people never walk back what they say. And so, because it's, it's really, really rough to dig out of a hole when people on your own team, not that anyone's really has a team team, but like, when Ben Shapiro says that, you know, Ben Shapiro should not be any fan of this like Muslim horde coming into Europe. I mean, the dude's Jewish. It's it's like what? Because he knows how fucked it is. It's becoming like pre World War II shit, where just Jews are getting just attacked and shit on the street. And so that's why I found that very surprising. So that's why uh, I criticized Ben Shapiro's take on the whole Tommy Robinson thing. So all right, let's just keep rocking and rolling. And, and uh, Ontario, don't forget to vote today uh, because you're in so much debt. It's, it's, it's pretty mind-blowing, the debt that Ontario Canada is in. It's uh, like it, you have to do massive, massive changes right now just to not completely lose everything. You know... Their, their debt to GDP ratio is way worse than California. They're just fucked. So just definitely vote uh, against debt. And that's not a right wing, left wing thing. That's not about social stuff. That's literally like vote to not sink your boat. That's just what you should always think. Like th think about, I became very passionate about a smaller government when I realized that mathematically this isn't going to stop. Like this exponential debt isn't going to stop and it's only going to uh, swallow the future generations whole. Like the debt situation is what the left claims uh, global warming is, but it's actually what it is. Like the left keeps talking about this global warming threat and how any minute we're going to lose everything and all the predictions were wrong and all the models were exaggerated and we haven't lost an inch of Manhattan or any of the shit that they're talking about. That's why they had to change it from global warming to climate change. And climate means change. So that means change, change. Literally, climate change means change, change. So that is a word trick. Change, change. Climate is change. So the, the, the rhetoric around climate change is what the debt is. It's coming, it's apocalyptic, and it's only going to keep increasing. I think there could be a soft landing. I don't think it has to necessarily be uh, bloody and horrifying, but it will be the end of the dollar if things aren't changed. Or else we literally just have to control the world with bombs and guns. Or else it's all over. This is a shot of uh, people heading home after the California election. California voters returning home after the election. It's just a shot of all these cars going into Mexico. That was really funny. Oh, this is from Honey Bear. We got a cartoonist on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. So it's a cartoon of something I was talking about on a stream once. It said, and that, boys, is how I died. It's like a cowboy. It's like, whoa, dang. Wow, cowboy ghost. Crazy story. It's just a bunch of ghosts. And then it shows me. And I look like, you know, KK crowd snickers. I mean, Owen ghost. How did you die again? And I'm like, come on, guys. I already told you. My teacher made me wear a dunce cap until I conformed to his way of thinking. And then I died of starvation. And it just looks like I have a, a Ku Klux Klan cone on my head. And they're like, right. It's not because I hate the Jews. And they're like, ah. It's <laughs> I think that's funny. Pointy-headed pointy -headed ghost was in my special Feed the Bear. Oh, and I just uploaded the entire Bellevue show for free on YouTube. 
So watch that. F feel free. There's some jokes in there that need some work because I'm now working on another special. Um, but it's it's a high quality show. And if you like it and you want to feed the bear, go ahead and buy the other one I just uploaded to Vimeo the uh, for 10 bucks, the uh, Reluctant Warlord. That's the one shot in Portland. And I was talking to the dudes who own that that woodworking shop. And I was like, and they're like, we got to do it again. We got to get more dudes. We got to get another comic. And I asked him, I was like, who's your favorite comic right now? And this dude was like Dave Smith, my boy who was on this stream that one time. And I was just texting with Dave yesterday. He watched um, that Tommy Robinson Hallelujah clip. And he's like, I'm not going to lie, dude. I, I kind of teared up a little bit. And I'm like, I know, right? That song fucks with you. Like the Hallelujah song is the, is the perfect amount of sacred and profane. It has that little bit of edge of like, it's not a cry you can hear at night. It's not somebody who's seen the light. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. Like that's a pretty aggressive line. But at the same time, there's reverence in it. There's a there's a holiness to that song. Well, at the same time, there's a little bit of a bite. And that's usually what, what gets me emotional. You know, it's kind of like the first three minutes of the movie Up. Devastating to me. Because it has enough of the beauty of family and then enough of the devastation of loss that I just can't even watch that 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 beginning of up is just oh god can't even think about it without getting a little jammed up this is pretty great if you check out wikipedia i don't know who did this but it's fucking hilarious saranac lake new york artist residence you have bella bartok spent summers in saranac lake and wrote some of his best known works there of course robert lewis stevenson spent the winter of 1887 in a cottage in saranac lake Cartoonist Gary Trudeau drew Doonesbury as a residence in Saranac Lake. And of course, the comedian, pianist, and actor Owen Benjamin resides in Saranac Lake and can often be found live streaming from his deck about trying to keep Mexican deer out of his backyard while his hot wife and cute son play soccer in the grass. That's hilarious. And I love that uh, Mexican is like is, is, is hyperlinked so you can like figure out what a Mexican is. And because Mexican deer aren't hyperlinked, because Mexican deer is um uh, is, is is kind of nonsense, but it does make sense in a way. That's how art works. It's it's nonsense that makes sense. Someone sent me this. Deadbeat son facing eviction doesn't know how to pack up his room. That's what we're facing, guys. But I know life is good. Like, right now. Like, right now, I'm doing a live stream for 700 people on YouTube. And uh, I'm sure a few hundred, well, it just went up to, it just went up a little bit. I'm sure uh, there's more on Vimeo and uh, Twitch because my YouTube, the numbers go down on YouTube when I do all the other ones, but that's cool. Just wherever's convenient for you. And uh, back like 20 years ago, that would have been impossible. This level of communication is having such a social unrest. And we're starting to, to hit that wall of like, of, uh, of the structure of society that we never would have known was there if it wasn't for the internet and our ability to live stream and podcast and all this stuff and talk to each other and form little clubs and groups and tribes and not cults like the unbearables it's not a cult. We would not have been able to exchange each other's stories to know like what the reality of society is in 2018. And, um, and so that's incredible. And I think that's one reason why it feels like the world's going to hell is because we can just perceive so much more now. And to think about what the 50s and 60s would have been like if you actually knew what was going down. I think sometimes people reminisce about a time when we just didn't know more of what was happening. If we had had access to Kennedy's Twitter or Kennedy's Secret Life or Kennedy... And Johnson and all these dudes and like uh, the amount of terrorist attacks that happened in America by the the weathermen or the weather underground or whatever they were called or the Black Panthers that that fun little club. It was just like think about living in 1968 when Martin Luther King Jr. assassinated Bobby Kennedy assassinated his brother assassinated three or three years before. That would have been crazy. Like, no one's getting assassinated right now. We're getting character assassinated online. But that's still just ones and zeros. And Amy got to see the house that that I uh, I bought for us yesterday. 
And to see her reaction was unbelievable. She was, she literally was like almost weeping saying, I feel so lucky that we can live this life together because there's a place for bees and there's a place for chickens and it's so safe. We like, you know, we own a ravine. So it's like, there's safety. Like we're on like a, a good vantage point. Um, it's, it's, the house is well made. It's got a huge garage. There's a place for live streaming where I won't hear anything. And, um, Artling, me and Artling are going to do some real stuff together. And for a lot of you guys that have wanted to see my hands when I play piano or stuff like that, Artling is an expert in multi-camera live streaming. So, and he lives in the Northwest as well. So we're going to set up a studio that's going to be a game changer. And that's why I'm so glad and thankful that you guys have made it through a lot of stuff with me because we're going to just continuously get better. And we're just going to just chip away at the, at the dead wood and keep building and growing and doing great things. And, um, and that's why those of you that have bought the specials or those of you that have been Patreons or subscribers on my website, it's like, now I can pay people to make this better. And we can make it so like when I'm teaching a piano song, you can see the shape of my hands. Like just that little jump is going to be huge. I can't figure that out on my own. Don't get me wrong. I can figure out stuff if I put my mind to it. The amount of man hours it, re it would require for me to understand like the Black Magic setup, which is the company that does uh, multi-cam live streaming, and then to have knowledge of what cameras to use and how to operate that and how to switch back and forth during a live stream and, uh, and then audio and all that stuff. It, it would take away from what I do, which is doing ideas, jokes, music, all that stuff to the point where it wouldn't really be possible. I could solve that. I could solve that riddle. You know, if you just attack like an engineer and you do just, just this to this, to this, to this, like you're putting together Ikea furniture, I could, but that would take so much time that I would not be able to do a third special in a year, three. And I feel this like fire under my ass right now to, um, to produce and to get things out there and to reach more people because I really think we're at a crossroads in our culture. Like, do we go down the Whitney Cummings, Bobby Lee conversation where it's like they're just casually talking about how many of their unborn children they've aborted and how it makes for great comedy fodder on stage and how I'm some sort of extremist now? That's mind blowing. I know these people. I like, I still like Bobby. Bobby's a, a maniac, but he's a, he's a good dude. But you know, when, when he comings, like when you look like a burnt candle, like don't poke bears. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And I know why they do it. It's because they, they climb their, their, their mountain, their money mountain, their power mountain, and nothing's there. And so now they're just looking around like he's the problem. He's the problem. Patriarchy, sexism, racism. I need more work done to my stupid face. I'm never going to die, I swear. I'm going to die alone. I'm never going to die. I'm going to die alone. You become this, this, uh, this, this spinning top. And when it starts running out of momentum, it starts wobbling. You know? Or a flawed gear. Like the gears, when there's like just a milli tiny little bit off. And with every rotation, with every revolution, it gets closer and closer to just destruction. That doesn't have to be your life. That does not have to be your life. If you pursue the material, if you pursue prestige, if you pursue power over knowledge or truth or respect or family or uh, shared ideals, community, stuff like that, you will become a top that slowly stops twisting until you fall down in a disastrous display. Michael Jackson died horrifyingly. He was so out of place in reality that he was giving himself drugs that you give to someone about to have surgery. He had mangled his face until he tried to look like Elizabeth, uh, what's her name, that lady from the Diamond commercial. Like, he was a mess. He only related to children, and he wanted to have sleepovers. And he was having these, like, roller... He was the top of power, the top of attention, the top of money. 
And he was pissing all his money away because he was a child. So when you go after that stuff, you end up broken. And there's different degrees of it. And when you're broken, you perceive the non-broken as broken. I remember when I did uh, Get God, Get a Baby, and Shut Your Mouth, that video. There's a dude who had his, had his own Comedy Central show this year. I, I, Jake Weisman. Weisman. One of those. One of them Jew names. And I, before I got permanently banned from Twitter, he, uh, he had said that it was, it was like watching someone lose their mind. That video has been like remixed. That video, I had more emails and more comments from people being like, this was one of the greatest things I could have watched. And then you see the other angle of reality where people go, oh, this is like looking into the heart of a madman's mind. Like you're insane. And I get to just watch because this is the thing that I have that they don't have. I've lived in Whitney Cummings' world. I've had those specials. I've had those development deals. I've been on TV many, many, many times. It's like I know that world. She doesn't know my world. She's never had a child. She's never been married. She's never looked at a house as a homestead of a place of growth where you grow food and get eggs. And, and, and you have reverence to uh, whoever allowed this to all happen. They don't know that world, but I know their world. And the thing about war is knowledge is everything. When they say knowledge is power, power, I'm having a weird um, uh, relationship with power these days. I, I don't quite know how I feel about it. I don't know what it is exactly. And I used to feel like I knew what it was, but now I'm starting to feel a little uncomfortable about it, saying power. But like, because I, I do think that there is a, I don't know, I'll go, I'll go down that rabbit hole another time. But but like, I know that world of like, oh, just have an abortion. Just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. It's funny. Just get rid of it. And then I also know the world, granted, I was never put in that position. There was a point in my life where I was pro-choice because I'd never been around a pregnant woman. I'd never gotten a woman pregnant. And I'd had decades of propaganda telling me that that was uh, how I show respect to women and how I don't legislate a woman's body. I'm serious. I've been that guy. The moment Amy was pregnant, that all changed. That was like, what? Wait a minute, what? what is this? And the moment you see any of these images, a lot of these people have never seen what, what an unborn baby looks like in the womb, like 12 weeks. You know, you have these apps to tell you how big your baby is and like what it's feeling and what the growth is and whether or not they have hands and stuff. Like they don't ever see that. And so they just suck it out and they agree with it. And this is the tragedy. This is, this is the real tragedy. Imagine being a girl, like a good hearted girl, like a good chick. And you get pregnant and you have an abortion. And then later in life, you have a baby and you get to see that. You get to see like what it means to be a parent and what it means to create life and what it means to make the sacrifices necessary, the sleepless nights, the runny noses, the screams, the, the, the inability to just move all around as you want, you know, when you're hung over, it's a thousand times more like you, when, when you're married with a kid, you have to make your fights work. You have to not fight in front of the kid and, and you can't break cups anymore. Like that, that will imprint on your child. It's like when you go down those paths you, and then you look back at the fact that you sucked one out of your body, that will hurt so bad. Either you let that hurt happen and deal with it and penance and prayers and thoughts and, and just work. You can be, you can get through that. But unfortunately, I think a lot of people just tune that out and they cut out that feeling and then they have nothing. They won't even open that door, you know, and that's how you get cognitive dissonance. And cognitive dissonance is not a political thing. It's not right wing, left wing. It's way more on the left currently, but I, I, I see it in a lot of different types of people. And I, I try desperately, and I'm using the word desperately legitimately, I desperately try to search my soul for cognitive dissonance because I never want that. I see the weakness of it. I see what it does to someone's brain. People that I love in my life have had cognitive dissonance make their brain soft. 
And I don't ever want that. And I'm scared that um, when you have it, you can't always see it. So feel free if you ever see me make an egregious error or I am a walking contradiction or I am doing an accepted hypocrisy, please tell me, please. Because sometimes people tell me stuff and I don't, I don't think they're right. You know, because I'll look through, I'll like think about it and really let it in. And I'll be like, oh no, that's your reflection. That you're a narcissist and I'm the lake or whatever that metaphor is. All right, I'm going to read some super chats and then we'll see where, where our days go. Because I'm doing a song for Crowder today about Miss America. If anybody has any ideas. I got some great ideas yesterday. Some people wrote some comments on yesterday's uh, uh, video that were hilarious. So I'll, I'll use bits and pieces, I think. But no one writes songs like the whole Unbearable Crew. And I'll tell you that right now. Like that Tommy Robinson song, that was a group effort, guys. That wasn't just me. In fact, a lot it was it was all of us, and it was it, we had this magical setup one day where there was like maybe two or three hundred people watching, and so I could be in the normal chat, and it wasn't just going by like crazy, and we could just, you know, put together a great song. All right, reminder: Tenny Ont uh, Ontario Bears, get out and vote right now. We are drowning in soy here. We can't let the uh, socialists win this one. And free Tommy, I completely agree, Stampy Bear, McCunty Fisk. My husband loves the pound me too joke. He wants to be verified as not a bear. That's great. That's great. I love the irony in it. Uh, welcome, not a bear. Go to unbearablesapp.com to register. Uh, here's some cash towards the move and new baby or just a coffee. Just a coffee is perfect. No, we're doing good. We're all right. I'll, you guys know I'll always tell you if I need money and we don't. I uh, We're good. But the super chats are great to... Uh, if you really want something said or you want me to read something or react to something, it's a great uh, market economics move where you pay a little cash and I actually get to see it. And it's a way for me to make a living. Uh, HugePianist.com for uh, the new special, uh, Reluctant Warlord, shot by the great Artling, it, which is Aaron Hartling. Aaron Hartling, he's the guy who does all those great paintings for us. Like He just did the, the, the feminist one that you can kill it. I mean, it's disturbing, but it's fucking great. Uh, this is from Jennifer. I love Aaron Hartling's pick of the feminist Lena Dunham looking woman. We can kill it pick going every uh, going everywhere. Choice42.com is a great pro-life source. Awesome. And I just think the pro-life talking points, I don't think people are really motivated. I know I wasn't. When I used to be pro-choice, I was never motivated by people calling women murderers and shit like that. It's all about the the reverence and the value of life is how you get dudes like me or, or or Arling. Arling used to be a liberal when he was in art school. And now he's married with a child. You, you see why they, they hate families? Because it's a lot easier to um, to use propaganda on people that don't have someone they love in their life. Like truly love. Like one person, one woman, or if you're a woman, one guy and you have children with that person, it's so much harder to trick those people. And uh, and so that's why that whole like women are murderers stuff doesn't work when you're not, when you're pro-choice because you, you've just been so trained to defend women. It's all because, because the way men are tricked is in defense. The pro-choice guys are either complete scumbag opportunists or they think they're defending a woman the pro-life guys think they're defending a baby it's both about defense and these 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 words are used to uh to manipulate men and so like my wife amy is like i, I don't understand how women just get pregnant she's like you can be on birth control or you can use condoms or you can uh she's like there's so many ways like how do you use abortion as a birth control mechanism it's so insane so because a lot of men don't really know women when they're single. Even you can have sex with a lot of women and still not really know women. Because you only know that first 10 minutes of a movie. You know, the first act of a movie. You never get into the nitty gritty of what it means to be a woman day in and day out until you live with one and you commit to one where you're not leaving each other. And then you really get to see behind the curtain. And then you start making life. And then you really see behind the curtain. And then a lot of this... These, these castles of sand of just propaganda just fall apart. 
Like I can't imagine being pro-choice now. And that isn't because my love of women has declined and my, my, my degree of wanting to protect women has declined. Quite the contrary. I, I think that women that have had a bunch of abortions and end up not settling down with a guy and just live a life alone working in some cubicle, you know, chanting in their little heads like, close the wage gap with just this rotting pussy hat in their desk. And all those women, they either just went their separate ways or they got their own families and, and, uh, and changed their minds about stuff. And you're just left alone in this little cubicle just waiting to die. You know, your cats start to die. Um, you're built nothing. There's no empire. There's no, you don't come home to anything. You come home to what's on TV. Like what's, what's going to reaffirm your, your flawed logic. Like what new comedy central show or HBO show is going to let you know that your life choices aren't horror shows. Now I don't want anyone to tell that woman she's a murderer. She has enough on her plate. I want that girl to know how good life is before she makes that decision, you know, and that's why I like to, to be so open about my family and, and the beauty and the struggle and the ups and the downs, because I don't know that many women that wouldn't see that and go, oh, that's way better than just aborting and then going on all these auditions. And then I have to, once you, once you kill on the, on the, on the, on the, on the what, not a mantle, what are those, and the altar, the altar of, of power, they own you, you know, then you got to keep going and then you lose your face, right? Like, look at this, look at these faces. The faces look the same. How do you, like Whitney Cummings, it's a cute girl. Bruce Jenner was like a masculine man. And now they have the same face. It's right out of like a parable of, of why to live a good life. And then, but the thing is, is you can look into the, uh, you know, Narcissus can look into the lake and see himself and the lake can look into the eyes of Narcissus and see itself. And you're in this trance, the, the, this, this hall of mirrors, it can't really break. And then what do you say? You say, what a great day. This is the best day of my life that I got to look into the eyes of, of real power, you know, of power, Bruce Jenner power, like, like someone who's willing to cut off their own cock and balls to avoid a manslaughter charge, you know, probably all tweaked out, their brains all tweaked out, probably from a combination of doing steroids for, um, for um, the Olympics, you know, endocrine system is shot, most likely some sort of training problem. And then just seeing, just seeing the praise and the, and the, the roses at the feet of all the Kardashians that you live with, because truly being transsexual, which is a thing, maybe 0.3% of the population, total, gender dysphoria, whatever you want to call it, isn't what is that. They don't dress up in fancy princess outfits and, and take bubble baths with roses and pretend that they're like, oh, it, it's, it's a little more literal. It's a little more real than that. That's almost like some weird um, fetish where it's almost like cross-dressing, where you would cross-dress to feel like a, a, a pretty princess. That isn't what transsexualism really is. Like gender dysphoria is a little more real. Like you feel like you're trapped in someone else's body. And that's a horrifying place to be. And it isn't about role-playing a caricature of what the other sex looks like. Like a 60-year-old woman isn't dressing up in these like, World War II pinup outfits and being on the cover of magazines. Like, look at our mothers. Like, they're not doing that. Like, like my my mother in her 60s was not being like, hey, world, Caitlin's here. Like, that's, that's a caricature. That's almost like acting like a 14-year-old. There's something real creepy about that. It's almost like um, Fifty Shades of Grey, how, how the woman had these, like, characteristics of uh, just a newly pubescent girl and that's uh that's not what being a woman is and and that's one thing that that used to bug uh bum me out about louis ck is the way he described his wife how he described her as like thick and tough and stern and sturdy and how he really was just whacking off in the basement because he he's like she's just weathered it's like how fuck you man you homo 
You know, that's what a woman, like a woman is sturdy and strong. Like that's kind of the deal. Like if you just want these like, hey, I'm new around here. I lost my balloon. <laughs> like you're a fucking weirdo. That's that, that, that's why these people are just playing uh, power make-believe. It's fucking creepy as shit. All right, more Super Chats. You're a sweetheart, Owen. Keep on keeping on. Your voice is needed. Thank you. And I see you're coming out of England. That's cool. Hey, Big Bear, I was at the Bellevue show. Freaking hilarious. I didn't get a chance to meet you. I had to get my mom home in a decent time or my dad wouldn't sleep. Next time, though, Man Bear. Oh, dude, I love you, Man Bear. Thanks for coming out to the show, and I hope your mom had a good time. Like, my wife's whole family came out to the show, and they uh, they had a blast, which is cool because it was uh, multi-generational. When you can make Granny laugh... That's legit. But, you know, there's some jokes that didn't work. So that's why I uploaded it for free. Just watch it. It's uh, just called Bellevue Live. I just put it on YouTube. But um, hugepianist.com for the new special from Portland. It was such a magic night. And I wasn't even planning on making it a special, by the way, at all. I just thought we were doing a show. And then Artling was like, did a three camera setup. And then Marshall uh was doing this like camera thing and the sound guy was was legit so i was like eh you know because there's a few jokes in there that i've done in other specials but it's like it's the live event it's doing a show on the back of an army truck named bruce in a functioning wood shop with free beer and they people didn't come for the free beer they didn't even know there was going to be free beer we got seven kegs for the for the people yeah, like the owner of the place, um, Mike, is such a giving, awesome dude. He didn't even want money from me at all. I'm like, no, I'll pay you for this. He's like, brother, you're a family man. He's like, I support you because the other last time you were here, we sat in my office and had beers and talked about family for hours. He's like, that's what it is. I'm like, but you did think the show was funny? He's like, yes, but that's not even the point. And so he bought seven kegs of beer for everybody. I did insist on paying him. I insisted. I snuck in a PayPal, but that was, he did not want a, a dime. Uh, and, the, and the crowd wasn't there for free shit. They were there for a great show. And just to see the look on their face when they uh, realized that, uh, that someone's just giving them something. It isn't manipulative. It isn't the Vegas effect. I don't know if I've, I, I, I want to coin the, the, the Vegas effect. One time I was doing a, a commercial campaign for Southwest Airlines and I was getting people to tell jokes on the street. And I had a free Southwest Airline ticket anywhere in the country. All you had to do is tell one joke. I had like 10 of these tickets and I was just going up to people. And so many people wouldn't even stop. I was like, oh, I have a free, uh, free uh, airline ticket. And people just walked by like, I don't want your horse. Because everyone was trying to get, trying to get something from them. You know, just free, free, free. Free, free, free. And it was all a scam. Mine wasn't a scam. Literally, all you had to do is tell me a joke and you would have a ticket that you would have been able to go anywhere in the world. Or not world, country. And um, and so that's why it's like, oh, free beer. It wasn't like that at all. It wasn't like a scam. It wasn't like trying to get people in the door. We had already sold out. And then I added 50 tickets and we sold all those in, in like an hour. So we were at max capacity, in my opinion. Mike was like, yo, just just do another 100. I'm like, I promise you, I'm watching out for, for everybody. Like, I didn't know how big we could have taken that thing. So um, just the fact that he was just like, gave everyone free beers was just insane. And he, his story, his life story is unbelievable. Like how he, uh, you know, like his life was was sketchy when he was young. And then he went from... Like a sketchy young life to being this like patriarch, this this guy who owns like a city block in downtown Portland with this thriving wood business, all these sons and a uh, beautiful and wonderful daughter who's just like kind. His wife loves him. Um, they do all this family stuff. They're they they homeschool. They're like they did such a good job raising their kids. And these are the people that accepted all of the unbearables in. And we did this big show on the back of his, his truck. And so I was like, once we filmed that, I'm like, we got to get this out. And so I'm going to sell it for maybe two months and then I'm just going to put it on YouTube. So if you're running low on cash, uh, it's all good. But I just want to be able to pay Artlink some a little bit and uh, 
you know, it's kind of how I make money is comedy. So I have to, Amy's the one who always reminds me of that. Like my first instinct is always to give shit away for free. Like always. And, uh, but when you have a family, you gotta, you know, you gotta fucking make some shackles. All right. Oh, and thanks for letting me out of the gulag. Oh, sorry. Sorry for gulagging you. Well, I'm not sorry, but you know, welcome back. I'm bummed the wife and I couldn't make it to your Bellevue show. Hope you got my email and were able to resell our tickets last minute. Stay safe. Oh, yeah. Well, I put it on the on internet just to, for if you want to watch it. Forgiveness at the cross of Christ. Thanks, Dale Bear. Um, the real drop bear. Because drop bears are real, they kill dozens of Australians each year. I don't know what that means. Cowboy here. What dates in... Uh, Wisconsin, I'll get a Mike MKE venue. Yeah, I, this is the thing I was going to talk to you guys about. I'm, I, I, first week of July, I'm driving across the country with uh, my dogs to be in Seattle. And I figured if I take a north route, I've been getting, you know, for those of you that are always on this thing, a lot of North Dakota seems to like the bear. So I want to hit Fargo. I want to hit something in Wisconsin, maybe something in Idaho, maybe something, maybe Detroit. I want to take a, a, a path across the country and get a couple shows in. So uh, comment on here if you know of any good venues that uh, are down to do something that that soon. Because that's coming up soon. And uh, yeah, let me know. Because I'll get that going. Oh, and thank you so much for the opportunity to perform with you twice. Bellevue will always be a special memory for my daughter. That's from Donnie. Yeah, Donnie just started comedy and I gave him two just phenomenal sets. You know, I'm like, when I was, that was like his fourth set. And when I, when it was my fourth set in LA, I was, uh, you know, performing on a functioning bar in front of like just wasted fucking people. Just either they don't care. Or they just threw stuff at me. So for Donnie, I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Go out there. There's packs, packed house of like-minded individuals ready to rock. So I'm glad you got to do that. And I'm glad your daughter got to come. What about women who never have a husband or a baby? What are we worth to your society of the future? Um, that's that's not an issue at all. Like that's like saying, what about a guy who never owns his own land? That's fine. Uh, and I don't get to make that decision. Like I'm not the one who says like you're worth this amount to society. That's a very leftist collectivist way of looking at it. I think that that um. If you don't have a family, you miss out on something in, in life. Some people think that about boats. You understand? I'm not telling you how to live. I'm just saying that um, everybody has value to society on some level. But I don't know your life. I don't know what you bring to the world. I don't know if, if, if you're nice to people or if you're a fucking asshole. But the fact that you super chatted means you're probably really nice to people. So I don't know. Some people just can't have kids. Some people missed out on their opportunity to have kids. Some people uh, don't want to have kids. And I found that the ones who don't want kids don't really seem very offended by what I say about this. You know, like I know some women that just never had an interest in kids for whatever reason. Just like I, they just didn't. They're like, I just don't like kids. And uh, so when I go on these rants, they're like, yeah, right on. Most women I know would, would really love kids. That's, that's right on. They just don't seem to really get that like weirded out by it. So I don't know your situation. I'd love to talk to you more about it. But uh, obviously all humans have value. That's kind of the point of my whole thing I was talking about is uh, why I, I stopped being pro-choice is because I saw the inherent value in all humans. And so when it's compared to the death penalty, that's so crazy to me. It's like, so you're comparing an unborn baby to a serial killer. One has done horrific things. And don't get me wrong. I'm not even for the death penalty just because I think the state fucks everything up. But uh, if someone does horrible things, they, they should be punished on a gradient, like on a scale of how much they should be punished, whether it's whatever. If someone rapes a kid, I want to put a bullet in their fucking head. If someone is simply an unborn baby that has done nothing, that is not killed anyone or done anything hor horrific, how do you think that that's a death sentence? That's what really freaks me out about the left, is they think that, like, just existence should get a death sentence if you want it to. 
that that's the level of power and control they want over us. Where it's like, if you see no difference between a serial killer on death row and an unborn baby, where it's like, well, you're pro, pro, um, you know, pro death penalty, but, but you save all the babies. It's like, yeah, one group of people are horrific criminals and the other aren't. Oh, I forgot. You don't have any morality. So you see the murder of a baby is the same as murdering Ted Bundy. Because there's no ethics. There's no way of judging the difference. Like, they're both just beating hearts if you're fucking awful and crazy. Thank you, Vincent. Great name, by the way. Guess who? Emailed you a link to a pop punk parody song I made. Wanted to make sure it went to the right email. Why don't they laugh at Gmail? Yeah, that's the right one. I'll check it out. I do have to go. Today's going to be a shorter one because I'm making a show, uh, uh, a song for Crowder. If anyone has any ideas for a, a Miss America song, because Miss America is no longer judging beauty, uh, comment in the section below. And uh, again, hugepianist.com for the new special, uh, Reluctant Warlord, it's 10 bucks. If you want to see the new, my show in Bellevue, you can check that out. I just uploaded it to YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, hit no, uh, hit the notification button. And uh, I think, bye bye Miss America's Dies, that's funny. Oh, thanks Vincent. Hit the like button. Yeah, crush the like button. Like button's big because because I to get into like other people's eye line, you got to uh, the left made it expensive. Oh, and I sent you an email. Oh, sweet. Jordan B. Peterson's overall point for confidence or confidence. Oh, I saw that, Lin Yen. I read a lot of your shit. I just don't always, I, I can't always write back. You are so burkable to me. Can't you see? You are so burkable. When my mom started out as a lawyer, she was told she was making, taking men's jobs, also in law schools. Well, here's the thing about that. I saw Hillary Clinton. Um, oh, by the way, that's that's kind of the people saying that are kind of right. Just to let you know, the fact that women now do all these jobs is why women have to work and why no one raised the kids and why the kids are fucking psychotic now. So just to let you know that there was a point being made there that all the economy just adjusts to how much money a family makes. So let's say you have two lawyers and everyone's all rah-rah where it's like, oh, you're taking a man's job. And they're like, no, empowerment, right? So let's say a bunch of families start doing that. Now all the prices of everything just inflate so that you can't have stay-at-home moms. So that's great. That's awesome. That's awesome now that, that now women have to work and be moms. So they're going to be shitty lawyers and shitty moms because you can't possibly do both. You can't be a lawyer and a mom. Our son Walter got bit in the face by a dog yesterday, right? Just blood. You know, the dog's getting put down. It's, it's my, my wife's family's dog bit Walter in the face. It's getting put down, right? That's with a stay-at-home mom. Imagine without supervision. He's all right. He's a tough kid. We, we, we came to the conclusion that Walter's like crazy tough. He got bit right here. So he's got a scratch here. And it looked like he needed a stitch on his lip, which is cool because daddy has uh, had a, some stitches on his lip. See? See right here? But uh, so we went to the emergency room to see if we should uh, get him a stitch. I, I more just wanted to get clean properly. And uh, it took too long. So we, so we bailed. And because Amy's mom's a nurse, so she really cleaned the hell out of it. And Walter was a champ. He just wanted popsicles and to do two dial. We did, uh, we did, um, you know, I almost fucking killed her dog. And it's this little chihuahua, the shitty little chihuahua that, that, you know, he's made me fucking bleed. Right. And so he bites Walter's lip and Walter's just blood everywhere, you know. And I almost took this fucking dog and just, yeah, just threw it. Like I, I, I told Amy, I'm like, I want to put a fucking bullet in that dog. I would, I would kill it with a butter knife. That's how little I give a fuck about your dog. If that dog ever comes near our son again, I'm going to take a butter knife and I'm going to put it in his fucking throat and just go like this. So it fucking dies badly. And, um, and that's with a stay at home mom. So it's like, so it's like, imagine now that the moms are at work, the dads are at work. You're raised by a fucking uh, uh, illegal Mexican lady who many times are cool. Don't get me wrong. I've had buddies who, have, who were raised by illegal Mexican uh, ladies and they like learn Spanish and they're still friends with the family and all that great shit. 
but a lot of times they don't give a flying fuck about uh, Gringo Stupido, you know, uh, the, the white devil, uh, Diablo Blanco, Blanco Diablo. So they don't give a fuck about your kids. So, I mean, that's all I'm saying. So, and, and Hillary Clinton did a similar thing where she was like, when I was trying to get into Yale and all these men were saying, if you take my spot in graduate school, I will be forced to go to Vietnam and die. And I, I persisted. And I got into Yale. And the whole time I'm like, some of those dudes are fucking dead, bitch. That's the argument against female voting, by the way. You guys know that, right? They couldn't be drafted. If you can't be drafted, how the fuck are you on the same playing field as someone who can be drafted to war? Okay, this bitch gets into Yale Law. Good for her. If she didn't get into Yale Law, she does not have to go to Vietnam. She's not in that. Women don't look at the TV thinking, please, God, don't pick my birthday. I don't want to die. There was some units in, in Vietnam where they, they, they had a life expectancy of eight minutes. They got off their helicopter. You know, they were listening. It ain't me. I know, Senator son. No, it was Creedence Clearwater playing. <laughs> Fucking dead, 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 dead. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton's just in Yale like, I persisted. I, I was taunted and bullied by these men facing their own mortality for fucking to go die in a rice paddy field for no fucking reason just to be cannon fodder for the wealthy so yeah it's complete horseshit and people are, have had it fucking enough the fact that i'm this far right now as a fucking quarter jew artist with a college professor father the fact that i think these things means a lot more people think these things so, to stop communism? No. The, I, you know, the irony, of course, is Vietnam infected America with so much more fucking communism than we could have possibly imagined. I think that that was a long game play by the commies. Don't get me wrong. Fighting communi communism is very, very important, obviously. But it was almost like what Hamas has been doing with Israel. They're, they're running up to try and get that shot of like, well, what did Roy say? If the dog isn't bigger than my foot and can't hunt, then it isn't much more than a glorified rat. Better off with a cat. Oh, of course. So, it's like what Hamas is doing right now in Israel. Like, they're running up, setting fire to kites and shit, just running up trying to kill Dulev and Ben Shapiro. And, uh, and they want to get someone shot. They want to get that, that picture. You know, they want to get, like, a shot of, like, an Israeli soldier... Just shooting some fucking Palestinians. So they, it's the same with the civil rights movement with uh, with that sheriff or whatever. With, with that kid with the dog. That was all staged. And by the way, that isn't a right-wing conspiracy theory. Listen to Malcolm Gladwell's episode of Revisionist History all about that event. They interviewed the kid who's now a grown man about uh, having that dog attack him. And he's like, the dog wasn't attacking me. That was a complete bullshit. So... What, what Vietnam was all about is getting those images of America the stormtroopers, right? Military, we defeated North Vietnam. That's true. But at the same time, we didn't because it was the multi-headed hydra. It's like they wanted the shooting. They wanted the blood so that they could paint it on our fucking media and say, and that's why, why the 60s went to shit because all these fucking hippies finally had something they could use with the general population and say like, Fuck America. And everyone's like, no, we like America. And then they would show a picture of like a little kid's head getting blown off and like a fucking um, American soldier because they, they hunt and pick like what is the image you use. And so, and the commie media painted it on our vets. Exactly, exactly. Our vets are going over there risking their life, uh, doing what they had to do for their country, called to service. They did what they had to do. And then the media used them as pawns, like right out of the Hunger Games, to like just get images, images, images. And then, and then, so when they come home, people are spitting at them and calling them baby killers and shit. And they just tried to survive. We all have warrior zone. We all have warrior mode. Every single one of us is capable of killing a kid in war. I mean, that's just something you have to accept or you can't be a good person. Oh, uh, the war started on a lie. Totally. Totally, Pender. <clears throat> Uh, wow, what's Sarah saying? I gotta, I gotta go here soon, though. Sarah, 
So gay dudes can change gender and start answering questions meant for women and start marrying straight men without telling them what they used to be and get sympathy from everyone and special. I know, it's fucking crazy. You have no country without the military. Of course not. I'm not saying anything anti-military. This is this is strategy, long-term strategy. It's like when when a chick wants to provoke a dude just to like have him freak out so that she can like break up with him. Where she's like, oh, DeAndre here, I bet he has a fucking huge thick dick. And the guy's like, Becky, what the fuck? It's like you're abusive, you're abusive. And then and then she gets to break up. That that's basically what happened. And yeah, without the military, there is no rule, there's no uh there's no uh land rights. Like the fact that we own land or a house, it's it's backed by the American military. It literally is like because they're like, okay, no one is taking our shit. Don't get me wrong, there's a pimp element to it. Uh, like they, they make us pay taxes, obviously, but the military goes where it's told and does the job, do or die, not to reason why. Right. Right. They're set and they fucking do it and that's it. But the overall strategy, because the, the, the commies really, I, I, I recommend you guys listen to, um, uh, Stefan Molyneux's, uh, talk with, it's about communism infiltration or some shit. It was like a couple days ago with this lady. The commies came in here in this fucking weird, creepy way. And uh, they've been rewriting our history a long time. Like, you ever think, what if the Nazis won? Well, what if the commies really did win? And how they rewrote everything since uh, World War II. That's that's real, dude. Like, we really are rewritten by communists. All right. Last, uh, last super chat. Everyone knows... It is a baby to different levels. Even the media will contradict themselves whenever a celebrity gets pregnant. They will talk about her baby bump. Love you. Love your stuff. God bless you. Oh, yeah. And it's also, uh, and it's also, uh, you know, when they're like, life is sacred, when they're talking about the, the Mexican babies and stuff, they're like, how could Trump be so cold to life? It's like, well, a week before you would have sucked its fucking brains out with a vacuum cleaner, you sick fucks. But then you realize it's not, they never want to not contradict. They don't give a fuck about contradiction. Look at these people. All right, look at it. Like, they don't have faces. Like, they don't have a face. If someone doesn't have a face, that that means that they don't give a fuck about what opinion they have. Like, Caitlyn Jenner and Whitney Cummings could literally just go, and just switch faces and be like, today I'm a special lady. It's fucking gross, dude. So... Quick mess, you know, if Whitney Cummings wants to keep poking bears, she can, but I will poke back and, you know, I don't have a TV show, but every one of these gets 15,000 views on YouTube and then 100,000 uh, listens on, on the podcast. So, oh, by the way, uh, Podbean, iTunes, uh, Stitcher, all that shit. Uh, it's called Why Didn't They Laugh? If you want just the audio, I might put up uh, the audio for... Uh, Reluctant Warlord for free on, on my podcast. Because I'd like to get the jokes out. I just have to make a fucking living. Um, all right. So hit the like button, share. I got to get out of here. Uh, look up Pallywood. I don't know what Pallywood means. Everyone should have to serve for a few years, male and female. Yeah, that if you want to vote. I just think, well, the fact there's no draft right now makes it a little easier for the argument that women should vote. Because I think women should vote on an equal playing field, though. It has to be equal or else... You can't have a protected group of people voting the same as a non-protected group of people. It's one or the other. Either you're cannon fodder like us, or you're saying that that men are not equal to women, that men are cannon fodder, because you get to make the decisions. You get to vote on whether or not we go to war when you don't have to go to war. So that's why uh, women's suffrage actually had an argument against it, a valid argument against it. And people are like, oh, Owen Benjamin doesn't think women should vote. If if one group of people is excluded permanently from war, that's people made fun of Donald Trump for that because he didn't go to war because he had a rich dad and he got out. Same with they, they same with um, I don't know, Clinton, I guarantee never served. Obama never served. You know, there's a group of elitists that never have to serve. So you look at those guys. And, and the left is outraged. You know, it's like these people are above. Okay, so all women, all women have never had to serve. 
Don't get me wrong. Men have never had to uh, give birth. I get, I get, I get that. But at the same time, women never had to go into a fucking coal mine. Like we, the bottom line is men and women are so fucking different that if you want to have equality under the law, you have to do some pretty monstrous things. I don't want women to be cat and fodder. We need moms. We need fucking uh, healthy, happy, protected uh, women. I don't want to see women run into a field and be gunned down. That would be fucking horrifying. I don't want to see men have that happen. But for some reason, it's le- it's it's just worse for women, in my opinion. I don't know why. Call me old-fashioned. So to say men and women are the same is, is just crazy. It's like nobody has ever even considered being like, oh, yeah, we need a draft for women. Just, just drop them in the jungle, and hopefully they don't get any fucking... Uh, those things called Puget st- or uh, those booby traps. They have these Puget sticks or some kind of sticks. They used to put shit on them so that you would get like, uh, if you didn't die right away, you got uh, you got these horrific diseases. Punji sticks, yeah. I have my rifle, shotgun, and handgun at the ready. Yeah, I I met it. Uh, Punji, that's it. Punji sticks. I always had pride in the fact that my country didn't require military service. Yeah, I I don't I don't think we need military service personally, but sometimes just given like this shit, this is the shit that makes me think we need video sir. Uh, you know, what is this? I like the video, everyone. Listen to Lev. She's currently in uh, Israel getting fucking flaming kites thrown at her. This shit. This makes me think we need military service. Deadbeat son facing eviction doesn't know how to pack up his room. Like. That shit. But at the same time, I'm glad. I want to be able to protect the artists and the sensitive and the... Because and the, and the, there really is a, a population of people that, that require a little more protection. They're a little sensitive. And you want to have your artists and your inventors and your delicate people. And you want the warriors to be able to protect the delicate. But at the same time, it's like, fucking, you don't know how to pack a room? Jesus. All right, so new special, hugepianist.com. Thanks for hanging. I will be, uh, I'm traveling tomorrow, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a live stream. I'm going to try, but uh, I'm heading back to New York tomorrow, and stay in touch. Comment on this. Let me know about any lines you have for uh, the American, the uh, Miss America song, and uh, hit the like button, share it. And check out all the new videos I just put on YouTube. I just put a ton of stand-up up there. Because I, when I do so many live streams and not enough stand-up, it, it, gets, a little, it gets a little gay. And uh, check out Why Didn't They Laugh at Gmail. At Why Didn't They Laugh um, podcast. Anywhere you get podcasts. And much love. And the world's a good place. Because at least we can still bitch about it. You know what I'm saying? If, if we couldn't bitch like this, that would be a much bigger issue. And they, you know, banned me for life from Twitter, but this live streaming ability, in my wildest dreams as a communicator, I never thought this would ever be possible. So, mwah. All right.